Hello people, and welcome back to part 2 of Noveria, our city's skyline snow build. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And thank you so much for all the support on the premiere of the start of this series. Uh, you guys had a really nice time hanging out on the channel. And I think I'm happy with it. It's a nice little start, isn't it? We've got lots of detailing in, and we'll definitely have to get used to this snowy kind of detailing. It's all very mute, isn't it? There's not much colour. Well, basically no colour. It's, uh, <laughs> it's brown and white. Get used to this palette, everyone. We're going to be seeing it everywhere. But otherwise, a nice little start to the city. Got some nice little action happening. These little walkways between the residentials. Picking up some use now as well. Got cute little designs all, all over. I was a big fan of this one. Um, where is it? Here. The, the small playground and the fencing just to expand the asset in some awkward space. Nice little cute suburban design here. I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you for those that are building along as well. Uh, there's been some really great shots in the Discord of people that are going to follow along with Novaria. Uh, plenty to get involved with still, I think. But generally happy with the start. And uh, it's looking quite quite chilly, quite frozen, isn't it? And do you know what else is frozen? Instant Gaming's prices. I am an official partner with Instant Gaming, which means that you guys using the links below to help support the channel. It really helps me out, and you get some disgustingly cheap codes in return for your chosen platform. So if you haven't checked out the link yet, it is down in the description. Thanks for the support. However, in today's episode, we have an enormous demand for industry, represented by this orange bar down here. And we could just keep expanding this awful zone industry, which I think, at this point in the channel, we know that Overcharged Egg is not a fan of the zoned industry. It, it does have its place, especially this asset for decoration, especially near ports and stuff, but there's a lot better that we can do than this, right? <laughs> this is hideous. So today, what we're going to work on is a hydroponic farm, um, something of a modern farming facility to sit up alongside our highway. And to give Novaria kind of its first proper fleshed out build. So, let's clear all this out and get started, shall we? Okay, so I'm just going to head and relocate our little services here. Got our water, power and fire. Just so out of the way for the minute, you know, we will eventually come to the point where we want to do a dedicated power plant build. Alongside a dedicated sewage and kind of water treatment build as well. But for right now... We want to clear out this area because we're going to be working with some interesting stuff today. So Exy has done a fine job of remastering this map and has included a nice little pocket of fertile land up alongside the highway here for us to make use of. So we're definitely going to be kind of running with this idea today, right? We first of all want to paint out an industrial area because we're going to be playing with the interest DLC today. I'll just kind of encompass all of this fertile land with it. And we'll kind of see what ideas and vibes we can get generating within this area. We'll also name this after one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Going to go for the Wayne Good Bar Hydroponics Facility. Let's make sure we capitalise the H. There we go. Thank you so much for your support, Win. Really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, you now have the farms in the area named after yourself. Okay, so first things first, let's begin to kind of formulate some kind of farm entrance, right? So we're going to use the industrial roads for this. I'm going to bring out a little, a little distance here, just of 210 for the meantime. We're going to come into our garbage and industry stuff. We're going to switch over to farm industry. We're going to grab the farm main building to sit up alongside the entrance to the farm. Okay, so I've just decided to flip the orientation of the farm building here. I don't think it looked quite right sitting up against the main road. So... Changing our orientation here, we're going to have a little farmland, farmhouse up against the road. We can decorate out in the back space here as well. There's a little farmer walking around here, which is okay. Okay, so again, we'll just amend one-way flow system here. I've also brought this back over by a tower too, because what this will allow us to do now is bring a nice central road out from this point. I'm going to run my road length here, okay? So we'll get that in. So let's start to kind of construct the main assets here and how these are going to sit so within the snow maps we don't actually get access to the fields and we only have the warehouses or the greenhouses i guess and um, but this is fine this is going to really kind of help contribute to that hydroponic feel okay kind of very industrial indoor farming is very much the vibe that we're after today and the warehouses or the greenhouses I should say. <laughs> I wonder how many times today we will refer to them as warehouses, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Have a little look at some asset orientation first of all. I'm going to bring my industrial road down, and then I'm going to run it parallel with the highway. Okay, and then let's just double check we are still within 
our fertile land here. Yes, we are. This is very nice. Okay, and then how about we bring a road out level with the highway slip, and then we can start to formulate some greenhouses around this area. Okay, so we've got in our first small crops greenhouse here, which is going to work nicely, I think. And to get the vibe that I'm after here today, we're going to be working with some very heavily repeated patterns, if you like. I think what we'll do is we're going to come, and then again, we're going to start linking up here. And there is an opportunity, again, to repeat this pattern. We can even save a pathway in the middle. So this pathway is very much purely uh, aesthetic and if we use the nature as a fence we can actually go ahead and get some kind of nice nighttime lights between the warehouses if we want to it's also going to blend nicely with the snow texture as well okay so i think i can kind of get on board with that we're getting this kind of hydroponic farm vibe right which is a word i've only just discovered by the way thanks to the discord uh, <laughs> shout out to shout out to brassac and exe for helping me find the inspiration behind this build today and there's also opportunities as well because of the small fruit fields, uh, yeah, the small fruit greenhouse. It's a slightly taller asset than the the crops one, so there's opportunities for layers of height here as well. Let's see how that works, right? Fantastic. A little bit of what we're trying to generate is starting to appear here from the highway now. I think I'm happy with that. I think it's okay, right? Again, asset orientation can really make a difference to your builds. But now there is a couple of assets that we very rarely use um, under the part life tab and if we come into the content creator packs there are a couple of assets here the biodome and the vertical farm that i think would work really nicely to kind of help complement this build i think that's what we're going to do maybe centralize the biodome in the middle and sparingly use the vertical farms kind of around and about the area we'll see so whilst our industrial area moves up to level two here let's have a little discussion about some decoration palettes for the episode I think what we're going to do is run with some farm fence, of course. I think possibly mapped into the tile that runs adjacent to the road, all right? And we can kind of use this as a nice little border. Maybe even bring it back a touch further than this. Maybe come in for the second tile, okay? And then again, kind of still slowly discovering the design palettes. We're going to try our snowy sugar maples again and kind of see how these guys fit in. There's highway decoration up alongside here as well. I really like the farm fence and highway combination. Really nice palette, but take this as the spice sample for the episode, right? This is kind of the, the vibe and the atmosphere that we want to generate across the entire uh, farm today, which I think we should we should be okay. So I'll keep repeating this in a couple of different areas, and then we'll come back once we've hit level two, and uh, have a little bit more money because <laughs> it's the start of a new city, and this is one speed problems. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we have just hit level 2 of our farm. This has unlocked a couple more assets for us. I think the problem we have today is that only really the greenhouses blend into the kind of vibe that we're trying to generate. The flour mill and the barns and the cattle shed all look a little more kind of traditionally farm-like. So we'll see how we can integrate them. Maybe split one side into hydroponics and one side into traditional agriculture. Don't know. We'll, we'll kind of come up with the idea together here, okay? So I now want to implement uh, the biodome into the area. So this again is very much aesthetic. This is more, this is actually a park attraction. It comes from the high tech content creator pack, which again, if you don't have, is linked down in the description to Instant Gaming. Go grab it, it's a pretty decent one. But, so this is a park asset, right? This isn't gonna to contribute to our farm in any way. It's gonna draw visitors, but it's more of an, an aesthetic choice as opposed to functional. But it definitely fits in, right? There's even kind of continued layers of height here as we kind of come back into this area. Okay, and I think as a, a nice little kind of front run down into what is a very technological farm, I think it's going to serve a purpose. And then again, maybe complement with a touch of the old faithful farm fence, okay? Just to kind of border it off, and then when we do have enough money, just 60 grand, <laughs> we can maybe place in uh, the vertical farm uh, right here to kind of sit behind it, alright? We'll have to wait and see how that's going to look. Otherwise, let's have a look at the level 3 requirements. So, we're going to need 350 workers. We currently only have space for 170, so we need to basically 
double our worker output. And then of course the resources will come just as time flows. So let's have a little look. Maybe continuing to expand our hydroponic theme here to kind of run up and around this side of it so it's surrounded on all sides by these greenhouses. Have a little look how we can keep expanding that idea. So again, using our tip with the straight road tool to remeasure, we're going to come from one point to the other and discover that is a distance of 540, which again will help keep everyone nice and parallel. Road guideline will be helpful here. Okay. Then we can keep these guys coming in. That's just a case of replacing in our assets here, which we probably won't have enough money to do them all. So we've set aside quite a lot of our industrial demand. So I'm just going to start coming through and expanding our residentials now. We're just at the end of the arterial here, up by where the high school is. But again, you know, it's important that we don't get lazy and just start to mass zone once we pass that first episode. We want to make sure that we're continually kind of repeating our themes here, okay? Then I'm going to stick to a little pattern of 4x3s up alongside the arterial, okay? I'm not going to go for the alternate zone in here. I'm going to kind of see what comes in. And again, just a couple of 3x3s three in these corners. I think I'm really happy with the aesthetic of the regular vanilla gravel path uh, between the residentials here. So I'm going to stick with this. Let's come off row length. Mm, can we live with it? No. <laughs> no, we cannot. I'm going to have to shift it over. There we go. That's fine. We'll just have this empty space here. Okay, and then we'll see what kind of residentials we get coming in along the arterial now. We're kind of heading out of the, the commercial high street into a little more residential action. It's a nice border in Riverland Park opposite these guys as well eventually in a couple of episodes time. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on satisfying a little more of that residential demand. I'm watching people come into the city just so we can get some more people in the farms as well. Also continue these zones up here too. I think what we might do as well is to help satisfy um, this commercial demand is to actually come into at the farm area and build a little green cities district and see if we can do anything with some of the farmers market assets over here as well. We're getting not enough buyers for products, this is fine. It's just because we're producing so much and it's not really going anywhere at the minute. And once we can start processing the crops into flour mills and animal pastures, we'll start to kind of see this demand drop away a little bit. So let's have a look at some of these animal pasture designs, okay? Um, let's come back to our industrial road. So I'm kind of envisioning that the farm is kind of split down the middle here with hydroponics on one side and uh, traditional agriculture on the other. So we'll see how we can run with this idea. We just have the small animal pasture available to us at the minute. I've been toying with the idea of some animal pasture spice up next to the bar domes here off camera. Uh, switching to a dirt road in the middle to help separate them, which I think I'm I think I'm happy with. I think I can get on board with this, alright? So let's see what we can do to maybe satisfy a little bit of this commercial demand in the farmland. So I'm gonna paint out a little district in this space here, okay? Something really basic. And then we're gonna give this district the organic and local produce specialization from the Green Cities DLC. And we're going to start having a little play with some uh, internal road networks here. So let's see what we can kind of do first. Let's make sure we complete our decoration pattern. Okay, so there's a particular asset I'm thinking of here that has 1x4 zoning. Very much what I want to try and recreate here, okay? Yeah, we use this in the music site model to build for those that ended up watching it. Okay, let's maybe got our connection over by one point and the asset that we're looking to generate is going to appear in this formation so one by four deep commercial zonings i think we can generate some farmers markets that sit within the farm itself almost as like a place for citizens to come and stop and pick up something from the local farm and like a little farm shop right a little farm stand and kind of see how the idea turns out here okay We'll hang around and wait for these guys to come in and then we'll see what we look like with a little bit of a repeated farmer's market spice to sit within hydroponic farm itself. Okay guys, so this is them. These are the assets that we're after, alright? Uh, the, the asset you're looking for is called the Whole Food Marketplace. I think they're all the same. Yeah, they are. 
But there's little kind of produce stands, right? They're kind of covered in fruit and veg. You can imagine this is kind of grown within the greenhouses back there. And then shipped out to these areas too. Again, if we do want to get rid of that snow texture, we can come in with a little bit of a vanilla gravel path, which will just help fill it out a little more. The the, <laughs> the power pump really takes away from the vibe, but it's only temporary, right? It's only temporary. Okay. Let's see what other kind of green cities assets we want to play with here today. Okay, so just playing about with a couple of different shaped zonings here. I think I can get on board with some indoor shops in here as well. Okay. Maybe a little bit of kind of solid indoor space to make use of the market. And then we'll bring a little path network around here again as well. I think just helping to introduce a little bit of Green Cities commercial in here. And of course once decorated it'll look a little more natural but I think we can kind of get on board with it right? It's going to fit in fairly nicely with the rest of the build. Okay guys, so just continue to expand our residentials here. Again, in the same patterns and ideas with pathways and kind of fence in between and whatnot. Just hoping to keep everyone moving around and get some nice little assets starting to generate in here now as well. So I do want to have a little talk, a little discussion maybe, about the possibility of some elevated pathway action over the highway here. And I think continuing to flow out of this little entrance path here is going to keep the walking network quite fleshed out within the area. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to come ahead and grab an angle on road length. I'm going to grab a curve tool. And the orientation of the lights does switch, but I think we're up against the highway. I'm not overly bothered about that. Okay, and then we'll keep this coming down here. Alright. Nice. So I'm not a huge lover of the elevated nature as a path, I think, for this. I think we will actually switch over the first elevated zoo path of the, of the series. So let's have a little look how this is going to appear. What by 142? And again, there is <laughs> there is the slightest tinge of green on that. So I think it's gonna gonna help us, right? Okay. We'll come over now, and then we'll land in the middle of the highway, just using our angle snap. Be able to make it over, okay? There we go. And then we'll come back into the grid. And then we'll snap to this one. And then we'll descend again by a distance of 142. So I'm expecting this to get a fair bit of use, purely because there's commercial and park assets in the farm area. However, it should also uh, help transport workers back and to from the farm as well. But I don't think it's too much of an eyesore, right? It's obviously not symmetrical because the residentials don't come out this far, but I'm not overly bothered about that. And um, this will be a nice opportunity for some green belt action with conifers uh, blocking that sound from the highway, which isn't too bad from this point. Yeah, they will be okay, but we can reduce it further. Okay, I don't think I'm too adverse with that. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves Nature Reserve Path again and provide the guys a connection uh, up into this side. Okay, so we'll leave the game on three speed here for a hot minute and see if... Oh yeah, here we go. People are picking it up. Very nice. Okay, let's see where they're going. Okay, so he's going to work at the Small Crops Greenhouse then. Um, so he lives right here. Yeah, that makes sense. And then keeps him off the road, right? You can just walk over. What about you? You're going home and you live here as well. Okay, so it would appear that a lot of the workers for the farm just happen to live here, which is... <laughs> Pretty convenient, but I'm um, going to keep them off the road, right? Just going to keep them elevated, which is always nice. A little elevated person spice, if you will. So what we're continuing to do here is just map out the road network, snap into road guidelines, and then kind of changing up whether or not you use your freeform or curve tool, just to help bring in some kind of different shapes and designs rather than sticking to that really rigid grid. And um, it's kind of how I design my suburbs, kind of drawing like a really basic grid pattern at first, and then draw out some different shapes from that, snap into different road guidelines, and then of course keeping a very specific zoned residential going as well, which I think now we're kind of seeing the grander scale come together. It is kind of having that effect, I hope, at least I think anyway. And we also introduced a little bit of commercial into this residential spot as well. Again, just to help break up that relentless zoning. It just adds in a bit of a different shade, a different texture. Of course, fences and bushes are always our friend when we're kind of Mass detail in areas like this. I think our suburbs are slowly coming together for Novaria. 
Okay, guys, so we are slowly ticking towards level 3 of our little hydroponic farm here. I think we want to start playing with some of the other assets. So we have a little look at the uh, area overview, which is right here. We can see that we're missing about 10 worker spaces in order to get the next level. And we've got a ton of industrial demand right now. So I think I'm going to try out the cattle shed up alongside the cattle here. Which I don't think is too bad. I think that's okay. Now, especially if we begin to surround it with more cattle fields. Maybe coming for one right here. And again, a little bit of kind of cow action going on. I don't think I'm massively loving the tarmac roads around this. I think we have to change them to dirt. At least within the kind of internal frame, okay? And wonderful. That is going to give us at level 4, which gives us access to some larger greenhouses. So we'll see how we can implement these. And also a milking parlour as well, plus the lemonade factory. So the lemonade factory, I'm pretty sure we can't place this yet, yeah, because we're not producing glass. As nice as it would be to have in. Okay, so I think I'm happy with how these are looking. I like my little smaller versions of the greenhouses within this pattern, I think. I don't think I want to change this too much. But I definitely want to play with the medium fruit uh, greenhouse and see how we can maybe run with this in a repeated pattern. Uh, so for those that are following uh, Palavan, we did something quite similar in the Clawson farm with these assets. So let's first of all have a look at the park asset because we want to place this in as well. Just 60 grand and it will centralize here. Let's have a look at it. So again, it is a park asset, it's providing entertainment value. But I think it has its place within a hydroponics farm build, right? I think it does. <laughs> I hope so anyway. But yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I think that's gonna work for what I'm after. We'll see anyway. So this is going to be kind of our animal area. Um, let's continue to work on our little little fruit green warehouses. So let's maybe start working with a little bit of road against road action here. So this is going to be our medium fruit greenhouse. And it's a nice looking asset. Not too dissimilar from uh, the small fruit greenhouses. But slightly different shaped asset. A little bit wider. And it's going to hold uh, more workers uh, for us as well. Which is going to be handy. Okay, so let's kind of discuss asset orientation. I think I'm going to keep them facing here. Okay. And then let's come out with our roads again, shall we? Uh, give ourselves a little more breathing room. And then we'll maybe drop in another one right next door. Okay. Then we can place in a couple more of our little fruit warehouses. Greenhouses, <laughs> whatever they're called. Okay, very nice. And then we repeat that pattern with the path through the middle. And we're going to get our Boomtown milestone on the back of that as well, which gives us a new area. Uh, new public transport options, which is really good. We'll definitely get into some public transport soon. Probably some trams next episode. Kind of build up a little snowy tram square. <laughs> really excited about that. That should be good. Uh, post services, which are always nice decoration opportunities too. Um, some vanilla ore stuff. Bunch of new policies, bunch of new roads, and some new pipes, and a bunch of new assets to go along with the public transport stuff as well, which will be fun. So that's going to give us a clothing factory, the farm maintenance building, the large barn, and the slaughterhouse. It should be quite an interesting time as to how we work with these assets, okay? Have a look at the clothing factory. Again, I'm pretty sure it's going to be too big and too expensive. Yeah, okay, so we're requiring plastics as well. Um, it's not something we have at the minute, so I think any of these major factories here within this small town vibe will really kill it. I think they're probably too industrial looking. So with that in mind, I think we'll run with the bakery and the flour mill vibe instead. Okay, and possibly put them down here on the front. Okay, so it's almost like people driving by can see the fresh bread being made and, and whatnot. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> something like that. Whatever kind of reason you need to... Need to justify your builds. Okay, so let's bring some fence against road action for the first time. And then we'll see what we can do here. So let's go ahead and grab uh, the bakery. Okay, so he's going to need animal products, crops and flour, of which we're producing two of those resources at the minute. Uh, we do need to come and place in the flour mill. Which is this one right here. Okay, so he's going to convert our crops into flowers. Or into flour rather, not actual flowers. 
Okay, we'll also keep this in a little one-way loop as well, just so it chucks that back in on them onto themselves. They come in, drop your stuff off, and then head back out again. And then likewise, we'll do the same thing as well um, with the flower mill here. We'll kind of have a look at the asset orientation. It looks a little a little wider than the, the bakery. And again, it doesn't really need a road behind it, but just for the sake of bringing some kind of concrete border around the back of the flour mill. I think we are going to do that. And then we'll also bring in a little bit of dirt path action just to fill out those white spaces between. And that should give us another little theme and vibe up alongside our farm here, okay? I think the specific placement of the factories within your industrial areas really makes a difference. And we saw it with the port in Palavan with the uh, industrial steel plant. And then likewise as well with the uh, soft paper factory in the forestry build. I think it all comes together, okay? Very nice. I think we'll now work on getting the slaughterhouse into the build. I'm going to kind of keep it with these more industrial looking assets over here. I think it's going to make sense over the wider scheme. Again, we'll just have a look at this asset first of all. Is it something we want up against the road or set a little further back? I see we've dug into another layer here, but I think that's okay. Yeah, I think I kind of want it up against the road here. Um, rather than just as a block here, because we'll expand our farms, animal farms out this way. I think that's what we'll do. Let's bring in another road that's going to run along this way. And just to help our traffic flow in the area, we're going to try a little concept over here in the far corner. And um, so at least in England, this is what we would refer to as kind of like a little slip road. I'm just going to make the tiniest little one-way exit. I think we're going to use our curve road tool here, actually. Okay, I'm going to come off all my snap into, then just kind of eyeball this as a nice little smooth curve. Okay, then I'm going to switch into a little highway ramp. So we do some people deciding to pick up as an option back onto the highway. It's just going to take a little bit of pressure off the front of the farm, having this little slip road here. We can blend it in nice with the detailing. Looks like he's going to take it as well. Nice, cool. So if they're already over this side of the farm, rather than forcing their way back through these junctions, I'm just going to have a little slip out of the farm here. You can also do the same on this side as well if we wanted to. I would tend to avoid doing kind of bridges over, start to get some slightly more industrial vibes, maybe save something like that for a downtown industrial build, but not for like a little farm like this, I don't think. So I'm thinking, why don't we continue to work with our animal enclosures here? They're going to provide 25 workspaces. Uh, per time, so let's have a little check on kind of what part we want to run. Probably this one again, I imagine. Let's come out with 160. Okay, and then we'll grab a couple more animal pastures. I think perhaps this time we'll maybe not have the road in between. Again, we can just place them back to back like this. Have the road either side, and then what we can do is our old upgrade trick. We draw in two parallel dirt paths. Then upgrade these to the nature reserve. Which again, drawing left to right will give us the little light to either side of the animal pasture here. But a nice little detailing trick to throw in with your industrial areas. You can probably even squeeze in some trees between here as well, maybe. Probably a sweet spot. Yeah, there is just about, <laughs> just about a small little sweet spot. Of course, trees do take away fertile land, so don't be placing too many of them. I think there's one or two at each end, okay? That's going to be a nice little addition onto the farm. So, let's check our spaces again. Okay, yeah, so we have the capacity for 813. We require 800, so we'll probably get to level 5 farm in today's episode. Uh, which is going to be nice. Okay. It's a decent little build, this. Has the... The aesthetic appeal I wanted for it as well, quite modular within its road design. Very kind of modern looking farm. And if we wanted to as well, once we do hit level 5, we can always upgrade these into large ones if we want kind of a, a chunkier aesthetic, right? This will be okay. We also place down the farm maintenance burden here as well. This is going to help and make our farm a little more kind of effective in everything that it does and produces. Again, some nice kind of fence against fence action within the two assets that we placed ourselves. 
I think I'm fairly happy with that. That's going to be nice. I think the last thing I want to look at uh, before we hit level 5 is maybe a little bit of a little bit of dirt road action within this space right here. Uh, to place in some of the forestry worker barracks. So they kind of look a little more like tool sheds or work sheds as opposed to barracks. So I'm not too bothered about having them this close to the greenhouses. Not that you would imagine the greenhouses are particularly loud anyway, but nice to maintain some point of realism, right? Fantastic, and we have just hit level 5, which is going to give us the last few assets, which is a large grain silo, a large animal pasture, food factory, a large crops greenhouse, and a large fruit greenhouse. So again, I don't think I'm going to run with any of the larger assets. You guys could, of course, if you wanted to. We'll have a quick look at them together. So the large, larger greenhouses, they're significantly larger, a lot more industrial looking. But again, all is kind of well with the, the world of farming we're making about. 7,760 from the farm, and then the unique buildings are giving us an extra 2,201. So making some really decent money now, and you can just kind of see, as I've been speeding through the game, waiting for this to level up, we've made an absolute ton of money. And uh, everyone's going to be happy. We are getting some kind of um, warnings about not enough resources and whatnot, not enough crops, not enough raw materials. Um, but, you know, these guys are all filling up with crops. It's just waiting for the trucks to get over to those crops but for the vast majority of the time we are producing some actual growable money for once but anyway this does feel like a good place for a detailed time lapse i've continued to bring the medium arterial around the back of the farm just so it has something of a frame and we eventually expand out into this area whatever's going to lie over there we're kind of preparing our roads to keep flowing in that direction and we'll also do something with this side um, of the highway Probably an extension of the suburb, maybe the first town centre around here, so it's kind of focused around all of this stuff that's going to lie over here. Also train line opportunities here as well when we get to trains. But otherwise, as a general concept, I'm fairly happy with the uh, hydroponics farm. So uh, let's detail it up, and then we'll see what we're looking like come the end. during the detailing time lapse here it would appear that the cows have inverted themselves and now have buried their heads in the snow <laughs> so to speak ah welcome to Navaria everyone 
Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, a like below is always appreciated. Even so much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. And there are various ways to support the channel down below, like I've mentioned today, Instant Gaming, alongside Patreon, and merch as well, should you so wish. Really happy with this build, and kind of the first time I've tried to bring a hydroponic vibe into the city Skyline's farm assets. And I think that the vertical farm and the biodome from the high-tech content creator pack really do help add to that vibe. And a lot of the other assets, like the bakery and the flower, mill they don't really lean into that high-tech vibe so separating them into a separate area of the farm helps them integrate a little bit more and of course some green city spice is always appreciated no matter what assets we use otherwise hang around for the rest of the outro targe this thing should look very nice at night time but i will shut up and i will leave it there i want to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day